In this video, I would like to discuss the responsibilities of a character artist and explain what you need to know to be a successful one. How's it going guys? Welcome to my channel. In my previous video, I talked about my journey as a character artist. I have over a decade of experience and I worked on games like Call of Duty World War II as a senior character artist and most recently as a lead character artist on Ghost of Tsushima. Throughout my journey, I learned the key aspects of what it takes to be a character artist and I'm aware of all the responsibilities and in this video, I'll try my best to give you some good information. If you haven't done so already, please make sure to watch my previous video to know a little more about me and my journey as a character artist. In order to work as a character artist and get into studios, there are three factors that you need to consider. But before we get started, if you are new here, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification button to stay up to date when I release a new video. Also, if you like this video and find it informative, please don't forget to hit the like button. It's going to help me a lot to grow my channel. A character artist usually has multiple responsibilities and if you're trying to be an effective one, then you need to be familiar with all of them. The studios always look to hire different levels of character artists, which starts by junior or interior level character artist. This is a level where you just get started and you're slowly getting familiar with the process and you can't expect to work on a full character. Usually these artists are given easier tasks, tasks like modeling props for characters or making a pair of simpler shoes or gloves. In this position, you need to work with the engine and understand how to import and test assets in the game. Even though the tasks that are assigned to you are much simpler, you're still expected to understand the basics like poly modeling, sculpting, UV mapping, and baking textures. You should be able to work with different softwares such as ZBrush, Maya, Photoshop, Substance Painter, and in some cases, Marvelous Designer. In this position, lead and higher ranked team members will support you and help you step by step, and you will most likely get a lot of feedbacks on your work. That is how you will grow to the next level, which is a mid-level character artist. People in this position are more experienced and more knowledgeable. They will most likely work on full characters, they are usually good at certain tasks, but not good enough to work on everything related to character art. You should most likely have a couple of years of experience working as a junior character artist to work in this position, and you will work directly with lead artists and more senior members of the team. Usually, after you ship your first game as a mid-level character artist, you will have the chance to climb the ladder and become a senior character artist. A senior character artist is one with a lot of experience and knowledge about character art and understands how to start and finish a character. In this position, you will communicate with other team members and you will help those who have less experience than you in the team. Game studios have entry level senior and experienced senior artists, which is more like a senior two artist. Entry level senior is someone who is just getting promoted from a mid-level position and a senior two is someone who has been working as a senior character artist for some time. Senior two usually is a very good artist and understands the whole pipeline really well. He or she is able to communicate well and help the lead in pipeline creation. Since they have years of experience, they will be good at problem solving and most likely they attend key meetings alongside the lead. After senior, you will have the chance to go higher and become a lead artist. Now, there are many differences between a lead artist and other levels. A lead artist usually should be a very good artist but should also have managerial skills. You will make critical decisions as a lead and you will most likely do more planning and attend more meetings. A lead usually does 20 to 30% art and 70 to 80% management. So when you work in a studio, don't expect your lead to sit there and do the best art. Sometimes leads won't even have time to do art. It is a huge responsibility and comes with a lot of stress. All right, now it is time to go through the key factors and talk about them in detail. First, as a person. Your personality and your attitude at work matters. Are you easy to work with? Do you treat everyone with respect? Can you be a professional? Second, as a team member, meaning are you a good team player? Do you handle feedback with professionalism? How well do you communicate? Do you help your team members? And also, are you a proactive or a reactive person? Third, your skill set as an artist. How good of an artist are you? Can you create great looking characters? Which softwares do you use? How good are you at problem solving? Can you do both organic modeling and hard surface modeling for characters? Can you model and texture heads and faces? Can you sculpt cloth? Are you capable of hitting deadlines? Now, I'm going to talk about the details of the third factor. When you work as a character artist, there are expectations that needs to be met. And here are the skill sets you need to have. First, anatomy. If you want to master the art of making characters, 
you need to understand anatomy well. Often I see artists just copy real life humans or actors without understanding what is laying under the skin. If you understand anatomy well, when you're sculpting an actor head or body, you will have a good understanding of the body part that you're working on and you will know which muscles, bones or tendons are under the skin. With anatomy knowledge, you'll make conscious decisions and you'll end up with better results. If you're a character artist, you should not guess and you should know what you are working on. With lots of practice, you will start to understand the differences between human beings such as thicker cheekbones or length of their nose or the shape of their face and so on. With the anatomy knowledge, you won't just sculpt randomly and you will look for specific shapes and you will understand the relation of body parts and the role they play into creating a unique character. Therefore, you will be able to make the proportions look correct and come out with better results. Also, when you understand each muscle separately, you will be able to isolate that muscle on your sculpt and work on it individually. This method makes it easier to be organized while designing and sculpting a character. There are lots of free resources on the internet that you can use to understand anatomy well, and I think you should dive deeper into this topic and look for references for anatomy dissection. Fortunately, with modern technology, you can find scans of human body muscles and bones, and you can even find models that are ready with separate muscles like the one that I'm showing here. There are also sculptures that you can purchase and have them on your desk so you can look at them time to time if you need to. Remember, even though the anatomy structure is the same, every human body has different shapes and lengths. Someone has bigger bones, someone has a smaller hands, and so on. Those are the details that give a specific personality to each person, and the more you sculpt different shapes and variations, the easier it will get for you to design characters or sculpt likeness. As an example, a carpenter needs stronger hands and thicker skin, so his body will adjust over time as a result of his job. He will have stronger muscles as well. But a musician needs precision and dexterity, so his body will adjust over time based on the instrument that he plays. As far as softwares, you need to use Maya, as I know every game studio is using Maya. Besides Maya, you need to know how to use ZBrush, Photoshop, and Substance Painter. I was asked if you should use ZBrush or Modbox, and I would say you should know how to use ZBrush because it is the industry standard software for sculpting. On top of those, as a character artist, knowing how to work with the Unreal Engine will help you to be able to use all the other engines that is out there since the basics for them is similar. Second skill, you should be able to work on both organic and non-organic models. As a character artist, you need to be able to make different type of characters and you should know how to model armors and cloth. Also, you need to know how to use Marvel's Designer to be able to create realistic cloth. Another skill you should master as a character artist is problem solving. This is an extremely important skill because when you work in a studio, your team relies on you when it comes to completing your tasks, and they will most likely ask for your opinion as well when a problem presents itself. Problem solving might be challenging at first, but the more you learn, the easier it becomes. Number four, do not be a copy machine, be creative. As a character artist, you need to understand the art of making a character. You need to consider yourself an artist rather than a copy machine, and you need to be creative and use your creativity when it's needed. Understand forms and shapes and learn the meaning of primary, secondary, and tertiary shapes and details. Don't just jump in and start making characters with details when you don't understand the basics. You need to push yourself and learn the principles of designing a character. What makes a character look good? How to take a concept art and make it look even better in 3D? You will only improve this skill when you focus on it and do a lot of practices. As I mentioned in my previous videos, practice and consistency is the key to improvement. And here is how you can approach designing. Let's start with a story for your character. I always get inspired by nature and it is my main source of reference. As an example, if you want to design a creature, ask yourself where does this character live? How is the weather where he lives? What type of defense mechanism he needs in order to defend himself and survive? What type of other creatures he must face and fight against? All of these questions are relevant and will be the foundation for your design. Use those questions and search online and find out what type of creatures you can find on those type of environment. Let's imagine that our character lives in a desert. Is his skin similar to a lizard skin? Maybe he has spikes on his back to defend himself. Should he have long legs to be able to run or should he be able to crawl? Should he be fat or skinny? What type of body form will help him to survive in the heat of the desert? What skin color will help him to survive the harsh sunlight? What is his food? Does he hunt? What is his weapon of nature? You see where I'm going with this? By asking these types of questions and creating the scenery for the character you're about to design, you're having a solid process for creating your art. Number five, you should be able to make clean topology, UV, and bake maps. As a character artist, you need to be able to make clean models because at the end of the day, 
Your character will end up in a game or a movie and your sculpt is only used for baking maps. From my experience, most of the time it is part of your job to make the finalized geometry when you work in a studio. Besides that, learn how to UV well and bake clean maps. I'm emphasizing on these because I've heard all the time that artists don't like to do these things. Number six, subscribe to my channel. I'm kidding, but subscribe. Number six, texturing, lighting, and shading. So in order to be able to texture well, you need to understand color theory and you need to be able to use shaders and understand different materials like leather, metal, and so on. If you want to work in game industry as a character artist, then you need to understand how to work in PBR workflow. Make sure to learn at least a game engine. And in this case, I would suggest Unreal Engine. If you can use Unreal Engine, then you will understand the basics of an engine and it will be much easier for you to work with any other engines. You need to have a good understanding of lighting and you should be able to do look development on your character art, meaning you should be able to load your character in the engine, put it in a scene with proper lighting and test the shaders and colors under different lighting situations and tune them based on that. It is good to mention that game studios have their own character light box in their own engine, which is used for look development. Number seven, work clean and be organized. Many artists don't pay attention to their file organizations and naming convention. If you're doing a personal project, try to get into the habit of naming your assets properly and have organized folder structure. Besides that, make sure to have clean scenes. If you're using Maya, then make sure your Maya scene is grouped, named, and organized properly. Remember, working as a character artist is a business and you will not do what you want to do for yourself. You need to do what the client requires of you since you are getting paid for the job. A lot of artists have this idea in their head that if they get into a game studio, they will start designing and creating amazing characters or assets all the time and that is not entirely true. When you get into game industry, you turn into a game developer and you're not just an artist anymore. You need to get used to doing boring tasks and fun tasks at the same time. At the end of the day, this is a business like every other business and you won't have fun all the time. So these are the skill sets that you need to have and let's talk about aspect number two. Aspect number two is, are you a good team player? As a character artist, you will most likely make characters for toys, games, films, and game cinematics. Each one of these productions have a different pipeline and you need to understand the pipeline well to be able to communicate with different team members. In general, you will always need to communicate with concept designers. In a game studio, the only way to work effectively, you need to communicate with other team members like engineers, designers, art director, leads, and so on. You will also need to work closely with your lead and follow his instructions regardless of how great you are as an artist. When you work on a project, you will most likely have a deadline. If you have concerns, then you need to communicate with your lead or with producers to adjust your deadline. Miscommunication can cause a lot of issues and having someone to understand your issues will help them better to resolve it. Be proactive and not reactive. If you see an issue, then it is your responsibility to bring it up to avoid future problems. If you are a non-English speaker, then I would say that you need to learn English because both game and film industry are multicultural industries and you will get to work with many different people from different countries. You need to be able to speak and write in English well so that you can communicate with people without problem. When receiving a character assignment, make sure you understand all the technical requirements. Usually this is given to you by your manager or your lead, but it is important as a character artist to understand these technical aspects. As an example, you may need to speak with the technical artist or the engineer to set the poly budget for a specific character. So being able to communicate across multiple teams is important. Don't ignore it if you think the concept is extremely detailed and may cause the characters to go over the budget. Make sure to communicate that with your lead. Do you take feedback well? Working in a team is not an easy thing to do and you need to be ready to provide and hear feedback. And when I say feedback, I mean anything related to what you do. Feedback usually comes from leads, art director, and other team members. People have opinions and they want to be heard. As a team member, make sure to follow the feedback that comes from your lead or direct manager because at the end of the day, your manager is responsible to deliver the work. Make sure you're clear when you are providing feedback or seeking help. Also, if you don't understand the feedback, don't hesitate to ask. Being unclear leads to issues and you may get more confused. It is very important to be open, otherwise miscommunication will cause a lot of errors. The studio pipeline is a bigger topic and I will try to explain about it in another video. All right, now uh, the next aspect, which is the most important one. Your personality and your attitude at work. You might have seen an extremely talented and a smart artist, but as soon as you communicate with that person, you feel like this guy is weird and hard to connect with. And you don't wanna be that person if you want to be part of a team. 
Usually, people can deal with average art and great attitude, but they cannot deal with great art and bad behaviors. People cannot really tolerate extreme ego. It gets boring and tiresome. You don't need to change who you are for sure, but you need to make people around you comfortable and show them that they can approach you and communicate with you. If you are in a team and you can see that people are making mistakes, you can communicate with them, but don't force your opinion. No one needs to listen to anyone, even if they are wrong. If you're right, then let them go the wrong way because eventually they may come to you and ask for your opinion. And even then, just give it to them as an opinion and let them choose what they want. At the end of the day, you will not be held responsible if someone else is making a mistake. You can always improve your artistic skills and get better at it, but if you're hard to work with, no one will want to work with you. There are many great artists in this industry and it is extremely important to acknowledge that and work with your team members. I personally had the experience of working with people who had ego and look down on others and it is definitely not a good experience. I hope this was an informative video for you guys. I'll try to talk about the studio culture and pipeline in more details in the future. For now, if this was useful, make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel and turn on a notification bell for my next video if you haven't done so already. Also, please make sure to check my previous videos. I put them here. Also, let me know what you think about this video in the comment section and let me know if you worked as a character artist in the past or if you are working as a character artist currently and let me know if there's anything that I missed and if you want to add something to this list. Alright guys, this is the end of it and until my next video.